Hey guys, I know that some of us are really feeling it with this traffic light problem. Um, and first, I just want to acknowledge that that is fine and actually expected. This is your very first time doing a complicated problem and program that is using conditionals and variables in ways that you have just kind of started practicing with. So it's a lot of application all at once. It's very okay to feel like this is challenging you and this is a struggle for you. Um, and I can very much guarantee that when you guys figure out how to do this, it's going to make you feel so good and satisfied to know that you have this done and you understand what's happening. Um, I did want to give you guys a little planning help because I know that some of you are working up to the wire and some of you might be finishing this in the early days of break. And I just want to make sure you have whatever resources you need to finish. So this video is just a quick planning video on ways to approach this problem. And before I dive into it, one thing I do want to acknowledge is that through this whole video, I will be using pseudocode. Pseudocode, as some of you guys may remember from ninth grade, is a way of planning programming projects in something that is more readable to people, but not necessarily readable to the computer. So you guys might see me writing some like codey things out there. It is not necessarily something you could just take and plug into your program. So please do not treat it that way. Um, use what I'm about to talk about here and use that to help develop your code and check your code to see if you're on the right path. Um, I would also maybe recommend having a pencil and paper handy because some of this is stuff that you might want to write out and kind of for all planning that we're doing, um, you are welcome to plan in code comments or to like, you know, open up a Google Doc and write your thoughts down or whatever, but I really like paper and pencil planning. It really helps me to organize my thoughts and for a lot of you, you guys might have the same experience. So let's get into it, guys. Um, for this project, the first thing you were asked to do is just make a traffic light. And in its most basic version, that's pretty easy. You guys can get into styling, you can make it look way nicer, but a basic traffic light would be like one rectangle and three ellipses. And they would probably all have like their own fill and they would look way cuter and like more even and balanced than mine. Um, but that's just step one of your process. You're gonna get a rectangle and your circles and their fills all on the screen. And once you have done that, you never need to draw new circles or new rectangles ever again. You have drawn them once, they're just gonna stay there and hang out. What you then need to do is figure out what in this program is changing, because the thing in this program that is changing is what you are gonna need variables to control. So I know that if like this is my red light, I know that the color of the red light is supposed to change. So I'm gonna need a variable maybe called red light. I remember that variable names can be whatever, but for the purpose of our video, I'm gonna try and keep the names like pretty succinct to what they are. I also know that this light is going to need a variable, and if that is my yellow light, I might have a variable called yellow light. And then my last one, if this is my, oops, if my last one is my green light, I'm gonna need a variable maybe called var green light. And again, this is something where you could name them like circ1, circ2, circ3. You could name them Helen, Stephen, and Timothy. I don't care what your variable names are, but I do think it's really good practice for us to start naming variables things that make sense to us. So once I have these three variable names, I probably want to give them like a starting color value, um, and then I want to use them somewhere in my code. And if I know that they are controlling a color, I would probably be plugging these variables into a fill. If that's something that's confusing to you, I would encourage you to look back at 1.0.1, or actually, sorry, 1.1.1, when we first saw conditionals on a canvas, because those conditionals on a canvas can really help you um, figure out what we're doing here. We are using more steps and our program's a little bit more complicated, but the use of the variables is gonna look the exact same. So each of these variables would be used in a fill to control a different circle. Now, if we read our project prompt, one thing that we should have noticed is that this project is asking us to make the lights change color based on where our mouse is as we move up and down the page. And when I think up and down, I know that that is me talking about the Y position of my mouse. And I will in fact make this blue. So the whole time I'm gonna be tracking the Y position of the mouse and using that to decide, am I in the right place? And if I am in that place, what should be happening? Now, to figure out thirds on my screen, because in my mind, I want to imagine that there's like 
Let me see if I can get... Oh, they don't have lines. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to try and draw a line here. And, like, I just know it's not going to be great. Um, so please bear with me. So, oh, yes. Holding down shift works. I'm imagining that there are imaginary lines kind of cutting my traffic light into thirds. And this is probably cutting, like, most of my canvas into thirds. Um, and if your canvas is out of 400, you might end up with some weird numbers because you're going to have to split it into threes. But you can always resize your canvas. I think resizing your canvas to be something that's divisible by three would be really smart. So, like, I've seen a lot of students make the height of the canvas 600. Um, if the height of my canvas was 600, I'm just going to assume that for the video, then this first range would be zero to 200. I'm sorry that I'm just writing on the screen and not typing. And this next range would be 200 to 400. And my last range would be 400 to 600. So here's what I'm going to need to figure out how to code. For this first range, if my mouse is anywhere in this section, what I would like to have happen is I want this light to turn red, and I want these two lights to turn black. So my conditional, again, remember this is pseudocode, please do not try and type pseudocode into your editor, but it would look something like this. If mouse y is bigger than zero and less, and oops, mouse y is less than 200, then red light turns red, yellow light, turns black, gray, dark, whatever, and green light turns black, gray, dark, whatever. This would be a conditional that I would be trying to translate into JavaScript to help me with this program. Now, the red light turning red, that would be a changing variable value, again, just like you guys saw in 1.1. I would be giving this red light variable a new value by saying red light equals color and a red color. The yellow light turning black would be the same idea. It would be yellow light equals color, whatever that dark color is, and same thing with the green light. Now, in this next section, I am going to do something very similar, and this is going to be the last one I help you guys out with. Now, what I want to have happen is when my mouse is in this area, I want this yellow light to turn yellow, and I want the other two lights to turn dark. So now, I might have like an else if statement, that's saying if mouse y is now bigger than 200, because that's my new range, and mouse y is less than 400, which is my new range, then I want red light to turn black, gray, dark, whatever. I want yellow light to turn yellow, and I want green light to turn black, gray, dark, whatever. Again, this is not something you can paste into your editor and have work, but this should be an idea about like what's happening with this program. This is really weird to us because now we're thinking about regions of the canvas and we're programming in compound complex conditionals, but we are also thinking about the changing of multiple variable values. And guys, I really just can't stress enough, everything in this project you have done pieces of in some of those practice problems, which is why it's so, so important that we're completing our work in order, you guys have just not been asked to do it all together or all together with multiple shapes at once. So we are taking all of those little pieces, all of those little bits and pieces of skills that you guys have been learning, and we're merging them all into one place in this project. I know that you guys can figure this out. I have never had students who have just not ever gotten this, but it might take us a little bit of time. It might take us a little bit more work and focus, and that is okay. Don't stress. Come to support time if you need it. You can always Slack me or send me emails, and please keep this planning going if you want for this last section or for anything else that you just need to think through in your own brain, okay? Um, good luck, guys. I'm so excited to see what you make. Bye, everybody.